Hello and welcome. I like to conduct a new um, testing series. I like to perform for my members. Um, as you can see here I have various coils on the table and I do measurements um, and have a circuit which looks very similar exactly to the circuit I was using before. However, it's a complete different subject here and that is driven to anomalies I have seen over a long period of time but I was not quite sure uh, what to make out of it. But here in this scenario I go very specific in measurements and I do very precise measurements as well which is very important. Um, the coils are also not treated as step-up transformer as I have done it before as in my um, LED driver um, performance measurements. They are one to one coils or one to two coils um, and they inhibit very very um, interesting characteristic when driven in the so-called tool sieve configuration. Well technically um, a normal driver or a normal board with a transistor um, is working the same way. The only difference is the way you connect your coils to the system and you actually harvest energy from, if you want, from the reactive power from the back EMF of the coil when it hits back. When, the, when there's no power flowing anymore in the coil to keep the magnetic field active, it hits back, the back EMF, and that is what's charging the coil. So I have used it for, um, you saw that sometimes for the Bedini circuit when we take out in, uh, the uh, uh, charge for from the back EMF and use it to drive LED loads. We ha I have used it for the Hubbard coil where um, the, uh, the energy from the, from the back EMF did actually eliminate the LEDs without having any impact on the power consumption of the system at all. So what I have see, what I have here is I have now a specific setup from, for power measurement and that's very very important because nobody has done that before as far as I have seen. It was requested many times but it wasn't done. The reason being you can't do it or maybe you are not able to do it because you have to use specific instrumentation. You cannot use um, standard instrumentation you have to do an accurate power measurement. First of all, your power source needs to be isolated. So I'm doing that here using um, two supercapacitors with 120 farad, where the charge is only trickled up to a certain value. It stays at that value and I use it actually to calculate my power measurement from, from the input side. I have here measured currently is the power output on a standard switching power supply output. So this is my, my circuit where this power supply output is normally provided here and from here I take the so-called almost no load um, um, value from the potential point of view which is 29 volt currently on the um, capacitor charge and then I have my so-called unregulated output which is in a joule, con uh, joule sieve configuration which takes the energy directly from the coil when the magnetic field collapses. So we have currently here 0.7 volt and 8.3 um, milliampere used from, from a current point of view. So this is a power measurement. So I will do calculations and later on as well and to show you the details we have on the other side from a measurement point of view you have to use and there is no exception you need to use current clamps you cannot use any intrusive measurements here it will falsify all your results and you have to use active voltage probes nothing has to be intrusive because then you're adding um, um, voltage um, multiplier or voltage um, um, divider into the system and you get completely wrong results. So active voltage probe, current clamp and then we get a correct result and we do a full-scale RMS measurement 
here, as you can see here on the side, where I can do the calculation as well with a full scale. It measures all the different uh, values here, and based on the difference in between, it provides you with an accurate measurement, which is then calculated with a mass function, function to the um, watt value, if you want. So the measurement from the standard output or the switching mode output to the capacitor gives me an efficiency of 85 to 90 percent. That is not too bad, but it's also not very good. That is actually a standard output used for any switching power supply. In this configuration, I have it here. It's, uh, it's used everywhere. And that is what is used in power um, measurements for um, configurations or for measurement of the efficiency of your switched mode power supply. And they can be very, very efficient up to 80, uh, 95 to 98 percent. So that is used in a market by the industry, by electrical engineers all throughout the world. And you can buy all these components existing. If you're an, if your bench, uh, bench power supply you have at your desk is actually based on that system. Now, we have the values here. I can calculate that quickly. We have O dot, let's say, 7 volt. We multiply that with the current O dot 008. To simplify that, that gives me 5.6 milliwatt. Now, I connect now my so-called 5 volt load, or actually it's a 6 volt load. We have currently, that will drop the voltage now. If I connect that now here on my circuit, the first thing you will notice, it increases the current requirement. Yes, so it draws some current and we get some power out. So if I calculate that now, that will drop now to the values of this, uh, of this um, um, voltage um, value for these two LEDs. And I calculate now my power requirement on input side, O.7 volt times O.011. This is my 11 milliamp here. I get O.007 watt, 7 milliwatt. So my measured value is 7.7 .7 milliwatt. I have almost the same or exactly the same here. So we are, I would say we are around um, close to 100% of the energy you were putting in to the energy we're putting out. Let me disconnect that. Now watch what happens if I choose a different load and that also applies to something I have said over and over in the past, impedance matching. And also you have to apply the correct load to your, to your uh, system in order uh, to benefit from it. So this is now my 10 volt or my 12 volt uh, uh, load. So it will consume uh, more power, but also based on the specific characters of the LED, it will um, drop the voltage less than before. So we have the output here. So the first thing you will notice, we have less current requirement here. Let's say we take 0.6. Oh, six volt. I take the current clamp. Connect back here. So let me now calculate for you the power. We have 0.69 oh, volt times O dot O ten milliampere. So that gives me six dot nine milliwatt. I have ten dot four milliwatt here. So if I divide that now, ten dot four divided by six dot nine times hundred. I have 150 percent efficiency. So that means it is almost um, 
yeah, it's 50% more efficient than it actually would be with the other load. Let me go back to demonstrate that, that there is no error in my calculation because I've done that hundreds of times before I presented it to you. I go back to my load here thing. The current goes up from 8 or 9 to 11 milliampere and the power output is lower to 7 milliwatt. So that gives me milli of 6.8 milliwatt. We divide it again via the 10.2 milliwatt we have here. 10.2 divided by 6.8 times 100. 150%. So that is confirmed. So we have here and even from a ratio, if that drops down in voltage at the moment is quite stable here, the ratio always stays the same for this load. So what I'm going to do is I will um, do more analysis with all these different cores and we'll see how they perform under the same configuration with these two loads. Bear in mind, I did investigate already on this course over the last 10 years and one of my first videos is actually around based on that course that was for the Stern experiment where I did prove that a very very high permeability of this course is is available which is superior to any other core materials on the market. Talking about nanoperm and this matte glass core is a combination of nanoperm and, and matte glass so that's why it has inhibit uh, such specific functionalities as well. And also maybe you remember um, Tantraton uh, or self only pass as he was on YouTube investigated heavily on the specific um, um, properties of uh, ferrite cores and anomalies he could see when he measured the current um, output compared to current input or power input to power output. He saw the same anomalies and he was suggesting that specific ferrite materials should be um, produced and investigated. However, we have here only uh, production systems available and I do tests here already and I can say that the nano permit that was actually a core which was not well performing in my transformer circuit. I did a test for that one, you can watch it up on my on my videos under performance evaluation. This one was not very well performing but here it performs very very well. So I will conduct the same experiments now with all the other cores and see that Yes, we know that the ratios of uh, um, the functionality in this core is the same. The higher the voltage, the higher the frequency. Um, the lower the voltage, the lower the frequency. The shorter the coils, the higher the frequency and so on and so on. So it becomes very important now to measure that and that will take me some time. And that's the new series I want to um, inform you about and I hope to find you all um, as guests or as members on my website. Thank you.